Okay, lock it up. Here we go. together uh, to pull a job. I hope you were the groom. I would say Rusty is Danny's right-hand man. I would say Danny's the idea man, and Rusty, he makes things happen. Danny shows up with this brilliant master plan. It's never been done before. It's gonna need planning, a large crew. What's the target? Eight figures each. What's the target? When was the last time you were in Vegas? They had this master plan of trying to rob the casinos. Not one, but... That was a three. Which casinos did you geniuses pick to rob? Bellagio. The Bellagio, the Mirage, and the MGM Grand. Danny has a lot of blind sides, and Rusty tends to watch out for him. But Danny can sell you anything. Why do this? Why not do it? Because the house always wins. You play long enough, you never change the stakes. The house takes you. Unless, when that perfect hand comes along, you bet big, and then you take the house. I've been practicing this speech. A little bit. Did I rush it? Felt like I rushed it. That was good. I liked it. Back it up. Who told you to do that? I did. I was concerned you couldn't leave Tess alone. Who's Tess? My wife. Ex-wife. <laughs> you gotta be nuts, and you're gonna need a crew as nuts as you are. 
Elliot Gould uh, is Ruben is financing this whole thing. Who do you got in mind? <laughs> I'm uh, perpetrating as a dealer in Atlantic City. You have a plan already? Are you kidding? I just became a citizen again. Stupid white boy, Peckerwood, goofballs. <laughs> Carl's character I always imagined was like a woman who used to be asked out a lot and now doesn't get asked out at all. So are you sure you're ready to do this? If you ever ask me that question again, Daniel, you will not wake up the following morning. He's not cool in any way. He's the, the antithesis of that. He's very good at computers and very good at surveillance. He's good at figuring out problems. You've got so many cool people in the movie. I think... Relax. What are you saying about yourself? Oh, not about me, about Livingston Bell. I, I'm, I'm cooler than George Clooney. <laughs> Hang on to your knickers. Don Cheadle is the munitions guy. You know, he, he deals with everything that has to do with... Uh... Is a uh, Chinese acrobat. I don't know. It doesn't seem all that difficult. We got a grease man. We got a grease man. As is always the case, everything's going. But she's more than just a girl. You know, she's she's got some. And Danny, that's kind of a true love gone bad situation. Um, and with. Stay and have a drink. He can't. <laughs> I really, you know, and he is, and he, he likes to be in charge. And although I think he's very gracious with his uh, employees, he can also be uh, very ruthless. Oh, he's the enemy. Oh, he's the enemy. These are Terry Benedict's books. Yes, they are. You think you'll mind? More than somewhat. We were really lucky to get Andy. You know, it's a great role, but it's. It means that you have to come into a room of 11 guys who've been working together for a long period of time and like each other and get along and play the guy who nobody likes. It's hard to do. Tell me this is not about screwing the guy who's screwing your wife. Ex-wife. Tell me. It's not about that. Not entirely about that. Bells the bells are ringing. Oh, my God. Esmeralda. <laughs> This one really is about the heist. I mean, the, you know, three quarters of the film is us actually pulling this heist off, which is fun. You get to be in it and like watch us screw up and watch us do things you know, good and bad. It's, you get to you get to take the ride. This is the vault at the Bellagio. It safeguards every dime that passes through each of the three casinos above it. We're gonna rob it. Coming up with a way of credibly robbing a very large casino with a lot of security, something that makes sense and is entertaining, is was really difficult to come up with. Smash and grab job, huh? Slightly more complicated than that. Oh. Yeah. They're trying to knock over these three casinos simultaneously, which all share a common vault and they're trying to do it on a fight night. Casinos need to um, have enough cash on hand to, to cover every bet at play on their floor. That means on a weekday, by law, it has to carry anywhere between 60 and 70 million, 150 million without breaking a sweat. And so their plan is to hit this vault that night in the middle of the fight uh, while creating a series of, of sort of ever escalating diversions. Someone call for a doctor? I'm not Sir, in your face. You are in my face. You bumped into me. You got you in my way. I was trying to deliver my balloons. Gentlemen, 
We're just supposed to walk out of there with $150 million in cash on us without getting stopped? Yeah. It gets complicated. Things, things go wrong. Well, check the battery. We have a problem. I have to uh, scramble a bit to pull it off. Where's Linus? Back it up. So, so, it's me, Bucky Buchanan. Remember from Saratoga? We're gonna step outside now. Leave you two alone to talk things over. All right. Ah! Bash it. What happened? If you make one mistake, then the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Problem is now they know their weakness and they're sorting it out. They're fixing it. So unless we intend to do this job in Reno, we're in Barney. Barney Rubble. Trouble! This movie here is, is a big-ass heist. Everyone wants to see Vegas get taken to a certain degree because everyone's probably got a Vegas story. Times where it's just been nothing but fun. Now they tell me that I paid my debt to society. Funny, I never got a check. I just thought it was exactly the kind of movie that you want when you hear that, you know, there are movie stars and there's a heist, and it just seemed to really deliver on all the levels. You want a movie like that to deliver on. At the end of this, you better not know you're involved, not know your names, or think you're dead because he'll kill you and then I'll go to work on you. It's a crime. We should not be getting paid for this. It's just been a laugh. <laughs> I'm supposed to be steely and serious, and I was, you know, laughing like a 12-year-old, and it was, um, yeah, I think Stephen was getting, <laughs> starting to wonder, why did I bring these two people to the table together? <laughs> it all stems really from Stephen's sort of the karma that he disperses as a director because the director is always sort of sets the tone. He's a smart guy. Steven actually is one of the one of the um, easiest people I've ever worked with. Steven lets us improvise and we'll improvise and improvise and improvise and then I'll find out he wasn't even rolling sound. I haven't seen anything he's done yet, but I hear he's got a future. <laughs> Any questions? Exactly. All you really ever want somebody to do is have fun in that best popcorn sense of the word. Everybody seems to be doing such a bang-up job. I can't imagine that it won't be spectacular fun. And I, for one, can't wait to see this movie.